All right, guys, this video is going to get into types of plate boundaries. I'm going to go kind of quickly. Uh, make sure you take some good notes, and in your notes, make sure you take uh, write down some diagrams. And that's going to be really important for you to understand this stuff. We're going to talk about the three types of plate boundaries and then the effects of each one or what happens at each one. All right, so here's a map similar to what we've seen in class before. And what it's showing is it's showing lithospheric plate boundaries. Let's concentrate on something we already know. Here's the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, that thing that splits North America and Europe and South America and Africa. And here we have a couple plates moving away from one another. The African plates moving from the South American plate. And over here, the Eurasian plates moving away from the North American plate. This is called divergent motion because it's dividing, it's splitting. D -I -V -E E-R-G-E-N-T. And divergent plate motion is where two plates will move away from one another. And I'm just going to show arrows, draw arrows here to show that. Another type that we have is let's focus right here on the Nazca plate, right here to the west of South America. Here's the Nazca plate smashing right into the South American plate. They're coming together. It's a very different motion. That's called convergent, C-O-N-V-E-R-G-E-N-T. Convergent means to come together. Convergent means to come together. And then the third type is seen right up here by California. It's called transform. And this is where two plates slide right past one another. That's transform, T-R-A-N-S-F-O-R-M. And this is where two plates slide right past one another, getting sideswiped right past one another. Um, so I used arrows to define these. If you wanted, you can write it out there. But transform, divergent, and convergent. Divergent to divide, convergent to come together, transform to slide side by side. So what happens at each one of these boundaries? Let's go ahead and start with convergent. At convergent plate boundaries, and remember, convergent plate boundaries are where things come together, there's three things that can happen, but it depends on the type of crust that's involved. Remember, there's oceanic crust and there's continental crust, and their densities are different. When we talk about the density of these, there's a difference. The continental crust has a lower density, and the oceanic crust has a much higher density represented by the plus sign for higher and the minus sign for lower on the continental. And for a review of those, you can check your notes on Mafic and Felsic. But why that's important is this. We learned about subduction the other day, S-U-B-D-U-C-T-I-O-N, subduction. And that's where one piece of crust dives underneath another piece of crust. And what we talked about is that the more dense crust will always dive underneath the less dense crust. And generally, it's oceanic crust that will dive underneath continental. And let's go ahead and take a look at the effects of that. Here's a piece of oceanic crust, and it's subducting underneath a piece of continental crust, much thicker piece of crust. And again, the white here is oceanic, and the blue is continental crust. That's what the blue is. Here's what happens. When the oceanic crust dives down underneath the continental crust, once, once it hits the asthenosphere, some things are going to happen here. And this is a really important theme for us to get into here. So something's going to happen. First of all, the crust will heat and it will melt. Once it heats and melts, just like a lava lamp, its volume will expand. And according to the formula, density equals mass over volume. If you expand the volume, the density will drop. So what's going to happen is that the melted oceanic crust will gain a lower density or will become less dense. So as this stuff melts, it'll become less dense. It'll turn into lava. And when it heats up, it'll become less dense and it will begin to rise. And then what's going to wind up happening eventually is if it can work its way out to the crust, it's going to form a little volcano here and it will erupt.
This is the case with uh, volcanoes that are near coastlines at plate boundaries. There's subduction of the oceanic crust down into the astenosphere. It heats up, it melts, it, if it can make it through the oceanic crust, it will turn into a volcano on the crust. This is the case where oceanic crust converges with continental crust. Now, how about if I draw down here, what's going to happen if oceanic crust converges with oceanic crust? We have two pieces of oceanic crust that are smashing into one another. Two pieces, oceanic crust and oceanic crust. The same thing's going to happen. As this guy continues to dive into the astenosphere, it will melt, it will rise, and it will form a volcano at the surface of the earth and it will erupt. And it's all because the more dense piece of oceanic crust will melt in the astenosphere, it'll heat and melt, its density will drop, it will rise and explode. And that always happens because of subduction. Subduction is the major player here. Now there's a couple of other effects here that happen that's important for us to talk about. This little divot that forms right here, this pit, it's called a trench. And whenever you have subduction, you get trenches. And there's a trench here as well. T-R-E-N-C-H, a trench. And there's also something else that happens, is as this piece of crust is sliding past this piece of crust, when two pieces of crust slide past one another, you also get earthquakes. Earthquakes are very common with subduction. So subduction is commonly also followed with earthquakes. Now the last type of convergent boundary for us to talk about would be when continental crust converges with continental crust. This is the most involved type of boundary because there's all these different types of combinations going on here. We have oceanic crust hitting continental crust, oceanic crust hitting oceanic crust, and now we have a continental crust hitting continental crust. And here's what's going to wind up happening is as this thicker crust smashes into another piece of thick continental crust, they're going to push up on one another. Yeah, there'll be a little bit of subduction of a more dense piece of continental crust, but for the most part, one piece is going to continually push up on another piece, and they will rise up together, and they will form mountains. They'll form mountains. So we have one piece rising up and another piece rising up. They're pushing up on one another and they're forming mountains. And generally because the subduction here doesn't go very deep, there are no volcanoes here. But there are earthquakes. No volcanoes, but you do get volcanoes. Excuse me. There are no volcanoes, but you do get earthquakes. And that's the case any time two pieces of crust smash into one another. So again, continental, continental, they'll push up on one another and they will rise straight up and they will form mountains. All right, this is going to go a little bit quicker. What happens at divergent boundaries when things spread apart? A couple of things that you already know. Here's a case where a piece of oceanic crust is diving away from another piece of oceanic crust. Now here, of course, there's no subduction. And because of that, in this case here, there's no earthquakes. But what you do get are undersea volcanoes. And again, what we have here is we have oceanic crust diverging or splitting apart from oceanic crust. And we already looked at an example of this. We looked at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge in class earlier as an example of how plate tectonics happens or evidence for plate tectonics occurring. And this is where the North American plate's splitting apart from the Eurasian plate. Now, one thing we didn't talk about was this, is when continental crust is splitting away from continental crust. So we have continental crust moving away from continental crust. Again, there's going to be no subduction, but 
you'll get maybe some earthquakes more commonly here. Why? Because this is on the continent. And here's what's happening. If we take a look at this diagram here, we have some pressure coming up here from the asthenosphere, and it's pushing this piece of continental crust away from this piece of continental crust. And eventually it's going to thin it out. And when it does thin it out, pieces of crust are going to fall down. They'll just kind of sink right in like a piece of gum that's being stretched out. And that's called a rift valley. A rift valley. That's right here. So, divergence of continental continental crust will stretch out the crust. And it will cause it to sink and fall. And this is called a rift valley a rift valley there's no subduction there are no volcanoes that will form here because of subduction however we will get little volcanoes that form on land because this all happens because of pressure from the asthenosphere pushing up underneath from underneath the continental crust here now if this continues for a very long time and the crust stretches out far enough Look at this. You may get an ocean that forms into this valley. And the more this stretching continues, the bigger the ocean becomes. All right, now let's take a look at our last one. And that would be a transform boundary. And this is where two pieces of crust slide right past one another horizontally. Here we have a piece of lithosphere moving right past another piece of lithosphere. And they're sliding past one another side by side. And generally this only happens with continental crust sliding past continental crust. Now when we take a look at this, there are no volcanoes at this point. No volcanoes at all. Why? Because there's no subduction. But what you do, you do get is you do get earthquakes. They're, earthquakes are very common here because of the friction between the two pieces of the lithosphere that are sliding past one another. All right, that's it. We talked about plate boundaries. There are three, there are three types of plate boundaries, convergent, divergent, and transform. We talked about what happened at each. Tomorrow when you come into class, we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at some examples of each one of these boundaries, and you're going to have to map some out on a world map. If you have any questions, please feel free to send them along on Edmodo or send me an email.